Hello and welcome. Today we're working on a classic piece of audio gear, the MPEG-601. If you're a recording engineer or enthusiast, you probably have an idea of what this is going to become. That's right. I'm going to be modding the electronics to be a standalone mic preamp. This particular model is in very nice shape, but the take-up system has become a bit weak, so it's a good candidate for conversion. Here we go. This is the unit that houses the tape recorder electronics, including the microphone amp, line amp, and playback amp for the unit. These tubes are the main circuit for the microphone preamp and the line amp. So that's where I'm going to make most of the changes. This is a good time to tell anyone watching that there are dangerous and lethal voltages inside tube electronics. If you're not an electronics technician, seek help from an electronics professional before opening any piece of tube gear. Before I do anything inside the amp, I always discharge the main filter caps with an insulated lead 5K 5 watt resistor by carefully clipping it to the main filter capacitors. Please don't try these things at home until you're properly trained in handling high voltage electronics. And here are the parts we're going to install. With this restoration, I'm not going to change every capacitor inside this amp. I'm also not going to swap any resistors because there don't appear to be any bad ones in the unit. For the most part, I'm going to replace any foil tape capacitor in the mic and line paths and all of the electrolytics in the unit. The restoration I'm performing is relatively non-invasive, so I'm being very careful not to overheat and disturb the state of the heat-sensitive carbon composition resistors. So I'm clipping the capacitors out and leaving plenty of lead at the joint. With that lead, I'll create a little hook or coil to solder any new components in. This keeps heat away from any resistors, which already have very short leads, and might get fried with another round of the soldering iron. Because it's pretty tight quarters in here, I'm also adding lead dress to most of my new capacitors. I'll add shrink tubing wherever possible.
I often use my pair of tiny locking pliers as a heat sink on especially heat sensitive joints. Now to replace the multi-section can capacitors. I'm going to create a little group of caps with an eyelet and a long lead. I hook everything tightly around the eyelet before soldering and finally shrink tubing the joint. You can use any thin piece of copper tubing to create strong point-to-point -point style floating joints. Again, hook tightly and solder quickly. This enormous capacitor gets replaced by a small, modern equivalent. Now I need to make room for my power supply filter caps. I make a few coils to act as terminals for the wire leads to fit into. Solder in my ground joint. Whenever possible, I try to make good electrical and mechanical connections before soldering. So I often crimp flying connections together. Now I glue the caps in place. These are most of the parts I replaced today. Here's the final product. And here are a few sound samples from the lineup, before and after.
I've also been using this mic preamp to narrate this video, so you should have a good idea of how this mic pre sounds. I use cables from a few other videos I've made, so if you need studio quality cables, be sure to go back and check those out. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for all notifications. And do you have an Ampex 601? Tell us about it in the comment section. Click the link in the description below for some official hand-drawn Frank Olsen Twins merch. Thanks for watching.